Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And making headlines this morning, a major blow to efforts by Democrats to overhaul elections and voting rights in the U.S. Details on the GOP filibuster coming up. Plus, President Biden is expected to address a nationwide increase in violent crime. Details on his plan to bring more peace to the nation. Well, a little bit of a break from the extreme heat yesterday, but I suspect we are going to be closer to uh, what we've been seeing around here starting today. We'll check with Mike, who's back today. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 23rd of June. Thanks for joining us today. We made it to the midweek, and I could feel the difference yesterday. It was a nice break. Yeah, not bad at all, even in the heat of the day. Mike is back us, uh, with us this week, and uh, where have you been? We were uh, doing our post parade show Monday night. I knew where you so, were. I just wanted to let our viewers know. Uh, yeah, so got sleeping a little bit yesterday. It was Good. nice. We had, you know, a lot of cloud cover hanging around here. Temperatures did drop down, um, down to only 90 for a high yesterday. Now it is, his suspicions were correct. It is back up into the uh, mid 90s later on today. Plenty of humidity, and we are starting off with a ton of humidity. There are uh, some showers and thunderstorms way down there along the coast. Some of these will continue to kind of move into our eastern counties and just sort of then and looks like make a move up to the north. And so well off to the east, you may see a couple of uh, showers around here, especially in the first portion of the day. 78 right now, 80 Stinson, 79 in Helotus. These numbers, dew points are way back up, mid and upper 70s. Yeah, you will be definitely hitting a wall of humidity when you walk outside this morning. It feels like 86 at Stinson, 83 is the heat index right now at Helotus, as well as Canyon Lake. Uh, mold is on the moderate side. That's the only allergy and showing up and throughout the rest of today are going to be up to 90 at noon. A lot of these clouds hanging around this morning and then 95. So back up at or a couple of degrees above normal, but factor in the humidity, which is still going to be sticking around. It'll feel like about 105 or higher than that. Not quite up to heat advisory uh, criteria and, and hitting that threshold, but obviously it's going to be really darn hot out there. So especially if you're heading out this afternoon, going to Niosa tonight, Lots and lots of water. It's going to be this way the next couple of days. Then we get a break in the heat and we do have some rain chances down the road. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. The date has been set for special session for the Texas legislature for July 8th. It's an announcement made by Governor Greg Abbott yesterday. Sarah Costa is live downtown to break this down for us. Sarah, did the governor specify what his legislative priorities will be? Good morning, Mark. No, the governor's office did not release what his priorities will be for the agenda for the special session. His office said that those things will be announced closer to the start of that July 8th session for the special session. Now, Abbott has already said that he plans to ask state lawmakers to work on two priority elections and bail bills that died in the final hours of the regular legislative session after House Democrats walked out of the chamber. More recently, Abbott has said the agenda for the legislators over time round will also include further restricting in schools, the teaching of the critical race theory, which refers to an academic discipline that explores the role racism plays in institutions and structures of governance. And during a teletown hall with supporters Tuesday evening, Abbott said he would add a call for legislation that would prevent certain social media companies from blocking or banning users based on their viewpoints, legislation, that sought to do so die during the regular session. The GOP priority elections bill known during the regular session as Senate Bill 7 was a sweeping piece of legislation that would have created new limitations to early voting hours and curbed local voting options like drive through voting, among other things. Another question hanging over state lawmakers is whether Democrats plan to again break quorum to prevent the passage of an elections bill during a special session. Now, a number of House Democrats have said that they are considering all tools on the table in regards to a strategy to block that voting bill, including leaving the state during that session. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark, Stephanie. Now to President Biden announcing a new plan to tackle the violent crime plaguing so many cities, large and small, across this country. Today, the president is expected to announce new funding and a new effort to target illegal gun sales. ABC's Ike Jachi has more. Today, President Biden turning his focus to the rising tide of crime in America. 
there are major cities across the country where gun violence is absolutely the driver, where it is absolutely increasing. One part of the plan, the Justice Department will deploy so-called strike forces to crack down on illegal gun sales. The strike forces will deploy to these five cities where crime levels have surged. But the problem extends far beyond these five locations. A recent analysis of more than three dozen cities nationwide found the murder rate has spiked by 18 percent this year, and that comes after a 30 percent spike in 2020. In Detroit, authorities are investigating the deadly shooting of two-year-old Bryson Christian, who was in his family's truck driving down the highway. When police say two gunmen now charged in the case, pulled up alongside them and opened fire, thinking it was someone else. It was a mistaken identity of a car, an innocent family shot at by somebody too reckless to know who it was they had a beef with. And in Colorado last night. Dozens packing this church in suburban Denver to remember Officer Gordon Beasley. Police say he was shot and killed in a shopping district Monday solely because he was a police officer. A good Samaritan who rushed to help was also killed. Officer Beasley was ambushed by a person who expressed hatred of police officers. President Biden is also expected to promote community policing, focusing on building better relationships between officers and the communities they serve. Following a year of unrest in the wake of George Floyd's death and other police-involved shootings, it all comes as Congress considers a police reform bill and as departments across the country come up with new ways to train officers. When asked if rising crime could hurt the push for police reform, the White House insisted the two issues are not mutually exclusive. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Democrats' sweeping attempt to rewrite U.S. election and voting law suffered a major setback in the Senate last night, blocked by a Republican filibuster. The vote leaves the Democrats with no clear path forward, though President Biden responded by saying, quote, this fight is far from over, end quote. The bill, known as the For the People Act, would touch on virtually every aspect of how elections are conducted, striking down hurdles to voting that advocates view as the civil rights fight of the era. But many in the GOP say the measure represents a federal infringement on states' authority to conduct their own elections without fraud. This morning, we're getting a better sense of the Taliban's recent advances in Afghanistan as the U.S. continues to its military withdrawal. The U.N. Special Envoy in Afghanistan says since May, militants have gained control of 50 of the country's 370 districts. The Taliban's intensifying campaign comes just months ahead of the U.S. deadline to end America's longest war. A little over a year after losing their loved ones in a tragic helicopter crash, Kobe Bryant's widow and other families have settled a wrongful death lawsuit with the company that owned and operated the helicopter. Terms of the confidential settlement still have to be approved by a court. In January 2020, basketball legend Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others died in the chopper crash in California. Earlier this year, the NTSB said the pilot pushed the limits of the weather when he decided to fly that day. And time now is 438 and it's about 78 degrees right now. Up next, San Antonio Spurs learn their spot in the upcoming NBA draft. Plus, the Texas Longhorns live to fight another day at the College World Series in Omaha. Yay. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 78 degrees right now. A nice little break yesterday, but we are expecting things to heat up again. We'll be right back. Time for a look at morning sports. Our San Antonio Spurs will select 12th in this year's NBA draft. That's after the results of last night's NBA draft lottery. Not bad when you consider they select 11th last season and were able to land Devin Vassell, who played a total of 62 games this season as a rookie. This will be the fourth season the Spurs will pick in the top 20, and it's after they only had a 1.7% chance of landing the number one pick overall. Meanwhile, the Detroit Pistons beat out Houston and Orlando, who all had a 14% chance to land the top pick. Pistons expect to sled Kate, select rather Kate Cunningham out of Oklahoma State. Their first pick when the NBA holds the draft July 22nd. Stephanie Cerna's Texas Longhorns faced an elimination game yesterday against the Tennessee Volunteers at the College World Series in Omaha. Horns down too early, but Eric Kennedy drives in two runners, edging ahead by one. The Vols would tie the game at the top of the fourth, but the Horns charge forward at the bottom of the inning. Six for Texas, but they're not done. Cam Williams with an RBI single to left puts it over the top. Texas lives to fight another day. The final score, eight to four. 
One of the most beloved coaches in the history of, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm ahead by a script. Rough night for the San Antonio Missions in Frisco. Rough Riders wasted no time getting runs on the board against the Mission. San Antonio couldn't keep up and lost the series opener to the Rough Riders last night. Final score 7-2. They've now lost six of the seven games they've played against the Rough Riders this season. One of the most beloved coaches in the history of Texas A&M football, R.C. Slocum, has been diagnosed with a form of Hodgkin lymphoma. The university says Coach Slocum will have to undergo chemotherapy at Scott White Hospital in College Station. Slocum, the winningest coach in A&M football history after leading the Aggies from 1989 to 2002. He's a member of the College Football Hall of Fame and is currently on the College Football Playoff Selection Committee. And I like your mention of Stephanie Serna's Longhorns, although I can't take credit. For that one. You, you can't? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank well, you. I'm happy that they won for you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark. Right now it's 443, about 78 degrees. And you have a high cell phone bill. Up next, how switching to the cable company might help you save some money. And up next, a first look at a new way of training police officers by using what's being called a de-escalation simulator. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new way of training police officers. Code 33, shots fired. Oakland law enforcement using a new simulator to train in de-escalation tactics. Over that way, over that way. This simulator offers multiple scenarios to train officers to use the appropriate use of force. In this scenario, Officer Mia Cooper is confronted with a sex trafficker and a prostitute. I need you to step away from her. In one outcome, he bolts. But run it again, this time it's different. The simulator is increasingly being used in police departments across the nation, especially to help diffuse confrontations. How can both people leave that interaction safely? How can we both live through this experience and make sure that nobody gets hurt? I think that's our objective. And coming up at 7 a.m., a behind-the-scenes look at the training. Your GMA first look. I'm Matt Gutman, ABC News, Oakland. I need you to control your dog. All right, what's next here? Weather or this next story? Consumer report. Okay, that's what I thought. Are you paying too much on your cell phone bill? You may have seen those ads for cell phone service at, from cable and internet companies. And as 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris reports, they can often save you money. J.D. Matthewson was looking to trim his cell phone bill. At the time, I was paying Verizon about $170 a month. So when he got an email from Spectrum, his internet provider, advertising its cell phone service, J.D. compared plans and switched. I'm saving about $50 a month on my cell phone bill. Nearly 5 million people now get their cell phone service from a cable or broadband company who may offer it cheaper. How? Cable companies lease wireless capacity from major carriers and use Wi-Fi whenever possible to provide service. And that saves consumers money. Spectrum uses Verizon cellular network. In response to the competition, the cellular industry says the wireless industry has a long history of intense competition. If you already get your internet from Spectrum or Xfinity or any service from Altice's Optimum or Suddenlink brands, bundling your cell phone could lower your phone bill. All three companies offer one phone line with unlimited talk, text, and data for just $45 a month. They also offer flexibility so each family member can have a customized data plan. Now the potential downsides. Your service may slow if traffic becomes too high. The taxes and fees may not be included in the advertised price price and automatic payments may be required. Like traditional carriers, the cable companies offer 5G where available and some let you use your current phone or offer specials on new phones. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, we did that. We experienced slower service for a little bit. Did you? Yes, we had to go back. Had to go back. <laughs> yes. Mike's back with us now. Mike, I uh, decided to grill on the back porch yesterday because I wouldn't have to grill myself while grilling. <laughs> that's, that's a very good, good point. point. Yes, because it was only 90, I say only 90, but it's actually three yeah. below normally yesterday. And lots of clouds yes, out there. Sir. So silly humidity was around. Uh, humidity is around this morning, definitely, and then temperatures are going to be even hotter later on this afternoon. Beautiful view looking to the east about 845, and I'm assuming that's not a flare in the camera lens, and it, that is the moon. It's going to be full tomorrow. We've got some beautiful, uh, great pictures of the moon coming up here in the next uh, hour or so. Uh, right now, it is a tranquil morning out there, but again, the humidity is definitely up there, and we do have those showers and thunderstorms well down there along the uh, coast and some uh, fairly decent downpours as well. 
well. Uh, if you are thinking about heading down to the coast this weekend, Saturday is going to be a better day. Sunday, there may be a few showers and thunderstorms trying to pop up along here later on in the afternoon. So that's just something to kind of, if you're planning ahead, uh, to head down to the uh, southeast and along the coast. Computer model for today, one or two of those showers. I mean, there's a chance for one or two popping up around here. Uh, not very likely, though, but most everything is going to be staying well off there to the east, and those will sort of uh, say fizzle out a little bit. Again, 90 yesterday. And the other thing, what don't you see on this graphic? triple digit temperatures yesterday. Now, granted, in some areas it did feel like that, but today we will see more uh, some triple digits, especially down to the uh, west and southwest as usual, and everybody's going to be back up into the mid 90s around the metropolitan area. But then you factor in the humidity and we are going to have heat index readings about 105 uh, close to 110 in many spots. Again, not quite up to the threshold to prompt heat advisories, but still you got to take it easy. So if you are grilling, Make sure you got a big, tall bucket of ice water there to, to drink so you can stay hydrated. And that's going to be the case if you're going to Niosa tonight, uh, wherever the case may be. Humidity is going to be a factor, so it's going to be uh, really something you got to keep in mind. Around the country, not much uh, is going on. Notice the big kind of broad circulation, this clockwise rotation. That's the, the high, which is sitting on top of us, the summertime feature, which is always kind of sticking around here and that's the reason why we are going to be heating up as we go into the next couple of days we're staying on the hot side but then that's going to start to change a little bit as we go into the weekend so today 90 at noon partly cloudy skies and it's going to be hate to use the word typical kind of summer day 95 96 today and then we're going to have the heat index right up around 105 and higher than that in some locations same thing tomorrow pretty much same thing friday saturday low temperatures right around uh, mid 70s then we go into Sunday and there's going to be a really small chance for a couple of showers here or there, especially off to the east. Better rain chances though Monday, Tuesday and looks like maybe even lingering into the middle part of next week. Lower temperatures and some decent rain chances. Well, that, that worked out. I mean, we continue nice. to space out rain here yeah. or there throughout the break. summer. Finish up, you know, finish up Fiesta mm -hmm. really nice and then get some rain to finish up June. Well, I guess the rain rock worked, kind of. Indeed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now it's 452, about 78 degrees. And coming up next, why Britney Spears is set to be in court today. Plus, a first look at the ice road starring Liam Neeson and Lawrence Fishburne. Five tail Britney Spears in court today, plus Liam Neeson and Lawrence Fishburne are becoming ice road truckers in a new movie. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I'm in. If you're looking for an action movie involving big trucks and ice, The Ice Road will be your jam. It stars Liam Neeson and Lawrence Fishburne as truckers trying to save the day. Filmed in freezing cold temps in Winnipeg. Lawrence Fishburne tells me if you think it was movie magic, think again. Oh, it was cold. I mean, we could only be exposed for, I think, there was a time limit. Our exposure was, I think, something like four minutes or something like that. So why did he put himself through that? Two words. Liam Neeson. <laughs> the Ice Road is on Netflix Friday. Thelma and Louise are driving their convertible to Broadway. A musical version of the iconic Susan Sarandon Gina Davis film is being developed for the stage, according to The Hollywood Reporter. Last month was the 30th anniversary of the Oscar winning film. Oh, hey, hey, whoa, whoa. The conservatorship has got to go. Britney Spears will be in court today virtually to address the judge about her conservatorship. In a rare move, Spears herself requested to speak. That's a first for her. For most of the past 13 years, the conservatorship has governed the singer's finances and personal life, with her father as co-conservator. I need work. And she won a couple of Oscars this year for starring in and producing Nomadland. Frances McDormand with a birthday today. She's 64. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 456 and about 78 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, Republicans have blocked the Senate from moving forward on sweeping elections reform. What lawmakers plan to do now and why the president says the fight is far from over. Plus, Tinder is giving you another tool so you can win in your dating game. We're going to tell you how it works coming up in Tech Bites. There's a whole war full of memories behind this mural. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. And if these walls could talk, they tell you the story that I have coming up. And looking at Transguide right now, flashing lights and a ton of traffic on I-35 at FM 482. 
Not quite sure where that is, but Stephen Cavazos is going to tell you coming up after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The bill to establish a national standard for voting rights has failed. I'm Ike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, the Democrats' plan moving forward. As things get back to normal, the hospitality and service industry is looking to hire hundreds of jobs. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. In just a bit, we'll tell you about a job fair happening today. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 78 degrees. What a nice little break we had yesterday, but now today is all about the heat and the humidity. Again. Yeah, it looks soupy out there again mm -hmm. this morning. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is the 26th. 23rd. 23rd. <laughs> 23rd. I left it open for interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just in case, you never know. But it is the middle of the week. We made it. Yay to Wednesday. Mike Osterhage is back with us this morning, which is a good thing. And then we're going to check with Stephen. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Yeah, it is very humid when you step outside this morning. We had that break and, you know, temperatures were down uh, actually below normal yesterday. We still had some humidity out there, but we didn't have those you know, really high heat index values. It's not going to be the situation today because it is back to being very warm. 79 right now. The dew point measure moisture in the atmosphere is at 75. So it is definitely, you know, window dripping, kind of fog up your glasses sort of humidity out there. 95 for a high temperature later on today. And we are going to be seeing uh, temperatures stay fairly consistent the next couple of days. But there is some pretty good news way down the road. More on that coming up. The aquifer dropped down a whole foot in the uh, past 24 hours in yesterday's reading. And mold is on the moderate side. We do have a couple of showers and thunderstorms well down along the coast this morning. Uh, most of those are going to be staying down there. One or two may try and sneak into some of our extreme uh, eastern counties, as you can see right near B County. A couple of those showers and th again, the majority will just be staying well off here to the east, perhaps invading uh, right around Victoria later on this morning. But that uh, unfortunately won't be moving in here, but we do have better rain chances way down the road. Heat index right now feels like 83 when you step outside. 87 is what it feels like right now down the road at Stinson. So warm, humid, rain down along the coast. And then later on today, partly cloudy skies, heat index about 105 and higher than that. Not quite up to the threshold to issue a heat advisory, but still really darn hot out there. Lots of water, lots of water and even more and then staying hot the rest of the week. But then we get into the latter part of the weekend and it's not going to be as hot. We'll be dropping down to about 90 as we go into next week and we do have a better chance for a couple of showers and a couple of thunderstorms out there. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. And I like the tie, by the way. Oh, thank Looks you. Good. Hey, all right. Well, we got some construction that's happening here off 35 northbound at FM 4 this is a view from Transguide. You can see, though, it is creating quite the mess right now for drivers. A big delay right now happening. Now, this construction is expected to wrap around 5 this morning. As you can see, we're already past 5, so we're seeing some of the residual effects from that traffic, and it looks like this construction is still ongoing. Taking a look here right at the map, this is, again, off I-35 northbound going up to New Braunfels, uh, right at FM 482. Again, traffic starting to build there because of that construction. We usually see this in the southbound lanes, but right now it's in the north, so we'll be watching that one pretty closely. Hopefully they'll be wrapping up there soon, but more construction is happening around in our outline areas. This one looks like traffic has just cleared up off I-35 southbound at Von Orme. There was some construction going on there. Looks like these guys wrapped up right around five this morning, but jumping over to another area where we saw a little bit of delays uh, right here at Loop 410 northbound at Marbach. Again, more construction that has wrapped up. That was a big thing that would have been happening overnight. A lot of this construction that we're watching that Texas has reported uh, looks like that things are clearing up. Up, but we do have a stall over here at loop 1604 eastbound right now. Three lanes are blocked at Shane Field Road. Uh, as you can see right now, there is no issues that this stall is creating for our drivers off loop 1604. But again, something that we'll be watching very closely. Let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times while we got you guys with us here. 281 coming in from Bulverde. We're looking at 26 minutes. And if you are coming in from I-10 on from Bernie, we got 25 minutes for you. And if you're coming in from Castroville, we have 19 minutes on Highway 90 again to the downtown San Antonio area. Jumping back here to the view at Transguide 35 at FM 42. Pack your patience with you this morning. We're hoping this construction wraps up pretty soon. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. The Senate has voted to strike down the Democrats sweeping election reform bill. This morning, key Democrats say they plan to keep trying to find ways to change things anyway. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with more. 
The clerk will call the roll. Overnight, roll. Vice President Kamala Harris presiding over the sweeping voting rights bill. The legislation would make Election Day a federal holiday, require 15 days of early voting, and limit partisan gerrymandering. All 50 Democrats supporting the bill, including West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, who met with President Biden privately before the vote. We had a nice conversation. <laughs> Did he president's, president's message are very, very confidential. Oh, Manchin siding with Democrats after offering a narrower scope to the bill, which would put in place automatic voter registration and reform campaign finance laws, among other measures. Democrats pushing the bill forward, arguing it's needed to maintain democracy after a wave of new restrictive voting laws were passed in 15 Republican-led states. The moment met by a wave of Republican opposition. It is a solution in search of a problem. All 50 GOP senators voting against the bill, ending its chance of moving forward in the chamber. The American people don't want to see the things imposed on our election system that are in this bill. Moving forward, Democrats declaring the fight will continue. This voter suppression cannot stand, and we are going to work tirelessly to see that it does not stand. President Joe Biden releasing a statement following the vote, saying the fight is far from over, going on to say, I've been engaged in this work my whole career, and we're going to be ramping up our efforts to overcome again. Democratic a sentiment echoed American. by the vice president. This is about the American people's right to vote, unfettered. The fight now moves to the filibuster. Although Senators Manchin and Sinema are against ending it, there are fresh talks about either changing or setting aside the filibuster specifically for this effort. Ika Jachi, ABC News, Washington. And here at home, if you're looking for work, you are in luck. Later today, Visit SA is hosting a big job fair over at the Alamo Dome. This event is aimed at helping the hospitality industry right here in the Alamo City. Sarah Costa is live this morning with more. Sarah? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Yeah, hotels, restaurants, and entertainment venues are looking to fill hundreds of job positions. Members from 25, more than 25 businesses, will be at the Alamo Dome today to interview applicants for entry-level, part-time, temporary, and full-time positions. Right now, San Antonio is seeing a surge of visitors, and there is not enough help to keep up with demand. We need people who have... Uh who've been missing in the workforce for whatever reason to come back out and join us. <laughs> uh, our, our hotels have been very busy. We have, we have had a very busy April, May, June. Our July will be very busy as well. And so candidly, you know, we're all running a little short staffed. So that job fair is happening today at the Alamo Dome from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It is a free event and those applying for those jobs can park in parking lot A again from 2 a.m. to 10 p.m. and it's a free event. If you head to ksat.com right now, you can see a list of those businesses that are looking to fill these jobs and those businesses that will be at this job fair. fair. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. The 72nd annual Night in Old San Antonio Fiesta event kicked off last night where hundreds came out to enjoy the festive tradition. This party with a purpose benefits the Conservation Society of San Antonio, one of the nation's oldest and most active historic preservation organizations. So people had to wait in line for a blast pass wristband in order to get some food and something to drink. And it's one of the many changes to the NIOSA event. Those who came out say they are very thankful for NIOSA after it was canceled last year due to the pandemic. And in the back of your minds, you know, it's come at um, a significant cost uh, for so many families. So keeping that in mind, um, the level of gratitude for each other, what we have here in San Antonio is just off the charts. Because this, because this is such a popular event, NIOSA officials are asking if you're not vaccinated, they're encouraging you to wear a face mask. More details about changes or how to get your NIOSA tickets, visit our website, ksat.com. NIOSA continues through Friday. And it's great to see people having a good time. Indeed. 509 right now on your Wednesday morning, about 78 degrees. And still ahead, Facebook bringing shopping features to many of its popular offshoot apps. We're going to tell you which ones. Stay in a hotel or motel for your upcoming summer vacation. Watch out for all the germs. Up next, we'll tell you top places you'll find the most germs so you can avoid getting sick. Oh no, we don't like germs. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam. No germs here in San Antonio, right? Well, right. We're at, we're at 78 degrees right now. It's going to heat up. We'll check in with Mike later on.
have a vacation trip plan that involves staying in a hotel room. One of the things you don't want to be a part of your memories is getting sick from germs that might be lurking where you're staying. RJ Marcus tells us about the germiest places inside your hotel room. One of the positive things to come out of the coronavirus pandemic is a renewed sense of making sure everything stays clean, but there can still be problem places you need to look out for if you're planning to stay in a hotel or motel this summer. One of the biggest places for germs is on the alarm clock. According to an article posted at bestlifeonline.com, a study led by University of Virginia Health System found that hotel alarm clocks are one of the top places to harbor viruses and germs, especially the rhinovirus, which can contribute to colds. So you may just want to use your own phone to set an alarm. Next is the telephone. A study done by Travel Math looked at nine different hotels and found hotel phones can have a large amount of bacteria and fungus, including those that cause staph infections, strep, and gastrointestinal illnesses. Keep in mind that lots of younger kids like to play with these older, non-smart phones, so maybe consider disinfecting it before using. Third, ice buckets. Experts say avoid using ice buckets at all cost. That's because some hotel and motel chains don't require the ice bucket to be cleaned every time. An investigation done by public health inspectors in Minnesota showed ice buckets can be loaded with bacteria and an easy way to get the neurovirus. So if you want to go home with fond memories of a wonderful vacation, keep these hot spots in mind so you don't have to take a post-vacation trip to the doctor. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. And coming up in our next half hour, we're going to tell you about more secret spots. You're going to find germs that you might not think about. 514 on your Wednesday morning. And still ahead, details on Facebook's latest effort to get you to buy more stuff on its major platforms. If you have moderate to severe psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis, little things can become your big moment. That's why there's Otesla. Otesla is not an injection or a cream. It's a pill that treats differently. For psoriasis, 75% clearer skin is achievable with reduced redness, thickness, and scaliness of plaques. For psoriatic arthritis, Otesla is proven to reduce joint swelling, tenderness, and pain. And the Otesla prescribing information has no requirement for routine lab monitoring. Don't use if you're allergic to Otesla. It may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Otesla is associated with an increased risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts, or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. Tell your your doctor about your medicines and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Otesla, show more of you. In today's Tech Bytes, Facebook announcing four new shopping features. Among them is Shops on WhatsApp, which will allow users to chat with businesses before buying something. Another will let sellers set up an online store right on Facebook with on-site checkout. You can now add videos to your Tinder dating profile. Up to nine videos can be uploaded as the company gives users a more, quote, authentic way to express themselves. Also, a new speed dating feature will allow short chats with other users before swiping left or right. In the Heights may have disappointed at the box office, but the soundtrack from the musical based on Lin-Manuel Miranda's Broadway hit is having much more success. It just hit number one on the Billboard soundtrack's charts. It features songs performed by the film stars, including Anthony Ramos and Mark Anthony. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Yeah, if you blink, you miss Lynn Man Manuel Miranda's cameo there. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's small, but, but it's good. Uh, Look like the hot dog guy there. Well, it's the, popsicle. The clip. He sells, popsicles. He sells popsicles. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You've seen it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, and you I, gave it two thumbs up. Yeah, I like it. Good. Yeah, All right. Good. Upbeat right now. Let's see how things are. It looks like we're seeing improvement out there. 35 near New Braunfels. Yeah, Steven. good progress. Mark, it's F, uh, at 35 at FM 42. Looks like that construction has since wrapped up. Let's jump to TransGuide and show you what we're looking at. Actually, pretty hard to see what we're looking at without all those lights. Pretty dark out there from the view from TransGuide. But take a look right here on the map. We're still seeing a little bit of residual traffic left over here on I-35 northbound. 22 miles per hour. Traffic still a little bit slow out there, but the construction looks like it has since wrapped. This usually happens between 9 and the evening to five in the morning. So do be prepared for that. Uh, if you're coming out, getting out to the New Braunfels area over that time, we're jumping over here to this crash. It's a little bit past Bernie. And now the reason why we're doing that is because this crash has actually been there since a little bit after three this morning. Texas has reported it's off I 10 eastbound at FM 289. Now again, if you are going to be coming in from I 10 from Bernie to the downtown San Antonio area, this crash could likely impact your commute because we're seeing traffic already building up there in those eastbound lanes been out there for a little 
while longer, but we're going to be watching that closely to see how that could cause any delays, if any at all. So other than that, it has been a pretty quiet day here in the Alamo City, and we'd like to see that compared to yesterday. We had tons of crashes, but right now things are looking fairly calm. Taking a look here at TransGuy, again, smooth morning, guys. And you said that uh, one on I-10 is way out in the hill country. Yeah, it's way out in the hill country. And again, people coming in from Bernie, we know they take I-10. The crash has been there for a little while, so it could cause some delays if, uh, if it's still there. Okay, eastbound 10. Got yes. it. All right, thank you, Stephen. Okay, something to watch out for. Wow, beautiful flowers behind Yeah, me. look at that. <laughs> yeah, I think Yvonne's uh, bragging about her green thumb, which is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, hydrangeas, peonies, uh, fantastic. Ah, it just reminds me that I need to cut my grass. So <laughs> everything's growing. So at least we got some, a uh, lot of folks got some decent rain a couple of nights ago, and we do have more rain down the road to help water all the, the flowers and grass and plants and everything out there. This morning, not much is, is out there except a whole bunch of humidity. And we do have those few showers down there along uh, the coastal plain. Some are trying to, to scooch in toward Beeville, but they sort of fall apart a little bit. Most are staying here along the coast and then going to be heading up uh, to the north. And again, if you are heading down to the coast this weekend, better on Saturday, Sunday, we may have another chance for a little bit of rain down there along the, the coast. All right, here's computer model, and uh, this is kind of a, a short term one, and you know, it's got a couple little sprinkles around there. If there's some mist, don't be surprised by that. But again, thing to take away from it is these showers off there to the east are going to be staying off there to the uh, east of us today. Maybe again, one or two in the uh, along the coastal plain. Heat index readings later on about 105 higher than that, not quite to the point where it warrants a heat advisory, but it's hot out there. So just obviously take it easy. Different computer model, a little further into the future. And this one, again, has a couple of showers along the, the coast later on today. Tomorrow, not much out there. Same thing on Friday, same thing on Saturday. Then we get into Sunday and again later on in the afternoon and so I say this, you know, tends to kind of broad brush everything, but there will be a couple of showers around here uh, Sunday afternoon, then going into Monday, a little bit better chance for some rain as well as going into Tuesday. Here's the reason for it. There's the high which has moved on in here. The usual situation that we have in the summertime, which doesn't really allow for anything. It's sitting just about right on top of us and it's going to stay in place through the next couple of days. So nothing will change through the rest of the week and going into Saturday. But what's unusual is and kind of unusual for this time of year is a huge, huge trough that's coming down here from the plains. And it's not as though it's going to be pulling any fronts through here, but that's going to keep us on the cooler side going into next week. And then also we have little disturbances and that's going to give us some rain chances. So with this trough kind of sitting in place, that'll keep us down around 90. Maybe some folks not getting out of the 80s next week. A little rain chances. Then also what we're going to be watching is uh, perhaps a bit of a low trying to move in there from the uh, Gulf of Mexico as we go in toward the middle part of next week. And that's going to help with uh, some of the rain chances around here. But yeah, to finish up the, uh, the month of June and starting off July, it looks like we are going to be below normal and Again, some rain chances. 90, partly cloudy skies today at noon. High temperature today, 95, add about 10 to that. And that's what it's going to be feeling like because we're going to have plenty of humidity hanging around here. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on Friday, Saturday. And then Sunday, a shower or two in the afternoon, especially off to the east. Then some better rain chances. Monday, Tuesday, going into the middle part of next week. I'm loving this having some rain in the forecast. Please don't yes. forget the pets. They need shade and fresh, cool water in the afternoon. Yes, they and do. the humans and sunscreen. Yes, sir. The humans, too. We <laughs> got yes. everybody covered, don't we? Thank you. Right now, about 523. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Hollywood is promoting a movie about a woman that terrorizes her black neighbors, plus details on some new awards for Scarlett Johansson and David Byrne. 526. The name Karen has become synonymous with entitled or demanding women, much to the dismay of women who actually have that name. And a new movie isn't going to make them any happier. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Tell me about your new neighbors. They're black. <laughs> Do you mind keeping it down? If you don't comply, I'll tell the manager. This is the first teaser trailer for a movie titled Karen. That's right. The IMDb description reads, a racist, entitled white woman in the South terrorizes her new black neighbors. No word when or where we might see the full film, though the teaser does include a BET Original Movies credit. 
Scarlett Johansson is the 35th American Cinematheque Award honoree. The Black Widow star and Oscar-nominated actress will receive the award at a gala and tribute November 18th in Beverly Hills. David Byrne's American Utopia is also being honored. The Tony Awards Committee is giving a special Tony to the Broadway production. The show Freestyle Love Supreme and the Broadway Advocacy Coalition will also receive special honors at the 74th Tony Awards on September 26th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. We've been listening to that guy for a long time. Yeah, we have. And he was here a few years ago at the Tobin Center. Was he? I, I missed it, but Mario... Um, our assistant news director said it was great. So nice, nice. Yeah, maybe he'll come back. 528, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, President Joe Biden plans to address a nationwide surge in violent crime. We'll get a preview of what he is expected to say. McDonald's starting its own loyalty program. We'll tell you when it starts and some of the free menu items customers might be able to get. Mm, I'm loyal. And ahead on GMSA at 6, a recap of last night's dramatic finish in Game 2 of the Western Conference Finals. Making headlines this morning, the rate of violent crime continues to go up, up across the U.S. How President Biden is looking to address the problem. And it's back, the heat and humidity. We had a small break yesterday. Not too bad, though. 78 degrees right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, June 23rd. I think we're supposed to see the skyline in that shot, but <laughs> yeah, it's so soupy out there. Yeah, it is. You can feel it out there as soon as you step outside. And it's even more stark of a contrast considering how much of a reprieve we got yesterday. Yeah, we had cloud cover and actually a little bit of a front that had moved through here, and that's what helped touch off some of the rain late uh, Monday night into early yesterday. Uh, I've been looking at this camera over there by the airport, so it's not quite as bad, but that uh, camera down there at Brook City Base looking up toward the skyline, yeah, that was not a pretty picture at all. But yes, it is definitely humid out there because we've got these numbers well up into the mid-70s, the, the dew point temperature, and we're at 79 right now. The normal average low temperature is 74, so 5 above where we should be put that all together and what you get heat index feels like 87 Stinson 83 Helotus as well as Canyon Lake and the airport it feels like 83 degrees mold is on the moderate side and uh, throughout the day we're going to be up to 90 at noon and that's what the high was yesterday so we did get a bit of a break normal average being 93 degrees but we're going to make it up to 95 today however add roughly 10 to that and it will feel like 105 same thing tomorrow Friday pretty much Saturday then we start to see some changes do include rain. Changes also include lower temperatures. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos had that big problem earlier this morning. Is that still lingering? Hey, you know, things have since resolved over for our friends off I-35 North, but <coughs> take a look right here at I-35 South. Now, what this is are just some crews that are left over from some construction that happened overnight. It looks like that construction has since cleared, but again, we do have some TxDOT workers that are out there right now uh, hoping to get out of that area soon, uh, but it's not impacting anyone's traffic or delays or uh, anyone's commute this morning that is here on I-35 southbound at Von Ormeo is where that construction was happening and that's where crews are working to get out of the way but looks like things have since cleared and traffic is moving nice and smoothly right now uh, but taking a look here around the Alamo City and our outline areas nothing too major to report right now it's pretty green and that's a pretty good sign and good time to head out the door maybe and get a cup of coffee before you have to head to your destination but we are watching this crash that has happened off I-10 eastbound just a little past Bernie in the hill country right at FM 289 now, TxDOT did report this crash around a little bit after 3.30 this morning. We're seeing traffic still building in that area, and this could be an issue if you are coming in from Bernie on I-10. But right now, let's go ahead and take a look at those inbound times. They're still looking pretty good on I-10 coming in from Bernie. We got 24 minutes right now, and if you are coming in from Castroville on Highway 90, we got 19 minutes. Coming in from Lytle on 35, looks like we got about a 17-minute commute time, so things aren't too bad right now, and that's a pretty good sign, again, if you're coming in from Bernie. But if that crash is still out there, we're working with our friends at Transguide to see what's going to be happening here in the next few minutes. Just be cautious and be safe on the roadways. Things are still looking pretty good here at 35 Event Ormy. Just be kind to our textile workers who are working to get out of the way. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, sir. This morning, our country is in the midst of a surge in violent crime. Today, President Joe Biden will lay out his plan to turn things around. CNN's Brett Conway has a look ahead at what we can expect. Trauma on top of trauma. First a pandemic and now an epidemic of violence. So far this year, there have been nearly 300 mass shootings. That's when four or more people are shot 
in one incident. It's sobering data recently compiled by the Gun Violence Archive. At least 10 of them were this past weekend in nine different states, from Alaska to New Jersey. Seven people were killed, 45 others were injured. And it's not just mass shootings. Major cities around the country Let me see your hands. have seen a rise in violent crime. The areas that have been very concerning were our homicide and shooting incidents uh, and domestic violence incidents. So we have a spike in violence right now. Uh, what are the frustrations that are Americans feeling? How are we dealing with mental health? How are we dealing with some of the stressors related to unemployment uh, in this country? Today, the president will meet with people working to turn things around from state and local officials to law enforcement. Then he's expected to announce a comprehensive crime reduction strategy, including executive actions focusing on gun crimes pushing Congress to come up with new gun control laws and to confirm ATF nominee David Chipman. The White House also hopes to take steps to link federal law enforcement resources with state and local governments. That's according to people familiar with the matter. But it's all made even more complicated by the politics behind it. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The Justice Department confirms the U.S. government has seized dozens of U.S. website domains connected to Iran, linked to what it says are disinformation efforts. And all 36 domains were seized. As a result, some users are unable to access sites like PressTV.com, an Iran, Iranian state-run English language news outlet. Iran's semi-official Fars News Agency reported the U.S. has blocked the websites of several news agencies, calling it a, quote, flagrant, flagrant violation of the freedom of the press. The seizure comes just days after the Iranian election. The election had the lowest voter turnout since the Islamic Republic was established in 1979. The U.S. says the election was not free or fair. If you're looking to buy a new house, start saving up. U.S. home prices hit a new record in May. The National Association of Realtors says the median existing home price last month was $350,300. That's a 24% hike from May of 2020. And it marks the 111th consecutive month of year-over-year -year price gains. Coincidentally or not, the rise in cost comes as home sales are falling. Economists say high prices are preventing some first-time home buyers from signing on the bottom line. The Midwest was the only region that saw a rise in sales in May. Here at home, San Antonio's new District 1 City Councilman says he's ready to tackle one of the key issues that helped to get him elected. District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo says homelessness is a citywide problem and he's hoping to work with council to resolve it. But in his own district, he's inherited a homeless camp outside the District 1 field house, which is Predecessor Roberto Trevino allowed as a safe haven for those experiencing homelessness. The camp doesn't sit well with residents in the area who they say hope Bravo will clear out. There are no quick fixes to this. What I've done is I hit the ground running and I've been meeting with everybody I can to uh, all the experienced professionals who work on homelessness issues um, to see how we can work best um, on long term solutions. All right, so one proposed idea is moving those outside the field house to the downtown hotel that Bravo and his council colleagues agreed to lease last week to operate as a low barrier homeless shelter. But that could take some time until then. Bravo says he'll keep neighbors in District 1 in the conversation. And time now is 538 and it's about 70 to 8 degrees out there. Still ahead, we'll tell you when you can start cashing in on McDonald's brand new loyalty program. Also next, if your kid's getting sick, you're not alone. We're going to tell you what local doctors are saying about a rise in childhood illnesses this time of year. Outside with live cam, if you are sick of the humidity, mm, unfortunate news. It's back today. Full force. Mike has more, and he's got a few storms in his seven-day forecast. We'll be back. I think it's safe to say as parents, there aren't many things worse than sick kiddos. Coughs, high fever, colds are our summertime illness for many this time of year. Pediatricians have been busy seeing a lot of sick kids, they say, following the return to normal following the pandemic. So pediatrician Robert Sanders with Petty Express, or Petty Express, says it was like a faucet turning on with the influx of six kids going in to see him starting around March. Many of those upper respiratory illnesses like croup, RSV, and the common cold are often associated with the fall and winter season. A doctor says it's important that kids be reminded to wash their hands, use good hygiene, even encouraged to wear a mask if they can. A rise in more serious viruses has prompted a notice by the CDC to ask more doctors to test for RSV. Respiratory syncytial virus, uh, it's a virus that causes bronchiolitis. 
that's um, <clears throat> that's an infection that actually can be pretty severe and little uh, in our younger patients. Another common illness in the summertime includes hand, foot, and mouth disease. Doctors think the illnesses will start to slow down in mid-July, but make a big return again when school starts in the later summer and early fall. Time check, 542. Up next, what you need to know about where germs could be hiding in your hotel room while you're enjoying your vacation. 5.45, last half hour, we told you about some of the germiest places inside hotel rooms. RJ Markets continues a list of places you'll want to sanitize before using. We're continuing to look at some of the nastiest places you'll find a lot of germs in hotel rooms. Another place to look out for is the carpets. They may look cleaned and vacuumed, but a lot of the time, the carpets are not disinfected. So be wary of setting up your suitcase or similar items on the ground. And maybe wear some slippers or some house shoes to walk around. Also, watch out for bedside lamps. It's the last thing many people touch before going to sleep and the first thing you touch when you wake up. According to another cleanliness study, lamps can have high levels of bacteria contamination, including including the dreaded fecal bacteria. Coffee makers are also a hot spot for germs. In some hotels or motels, the coffee makers are not cleaned regularly and can often have mold or bacteria waiting to be a part of your cup of joe. You may be better off getting your caffeine at your favorite coffee shop. Other common areas to look out for in a hotel room include the comforters and light switches. Most importantly, make sure to bring something to sanitize just to be safe. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. In your morning consumer headlines, Krispy Kreme is going public. The initial public offering is next week. The donut giant has been private since 2016 when it was bought by a private firm. The chain is hoping for a nearly $4 billion valuation, which will help pay off some debt. Krispy Kreme is offering roughly 26.7 million shares of stock at $21 to $24 per share. The ticker symbol will be DNUT and will list on the NASDAQ. Paid time off and company-sponsored health insurance are great benefits to have at work, right? But a new benefit could soon be added, a free Peloton membership. The app usually costs $12.99 a month, but Peloton is introducing a corporate program that offers it for free for employees of participating companies. <coughs> Excuse me. The deal also comes with discounts on Peloton hardware, including the popular bikes themselves. The program would be available to employers in five countries, including the U.S., Canada, and the U.K., Peloton has already signed up big name firms for the launch, including Wayfair and Samsung. And McDonald's will launch its first ever nationwide loyalty program on July 8th. The program called My McDonald's Rewards is only available on its app and gives customers 100 points for every dollar spent. People who sign up will automatically get 1,500 points after their first order using the program, which is enough points for a chicken sandwich, cheeseburger, or a vanilla cone. Once customers collect 3,000 points, they can be redeemed for six-piece chicken nuggets or a large iced coffee. Large fries or a fish fillet can be redeemed at 4,500 points, and a Big Mac or Happy Meal is free at 6,000 points. Hardy, our producer, I like how he did that. He did Krispy Kreme, uh -huh. Peloton, right. and McDonald's. Uh -huh. See what you're doing there, Hardy. I do you see. <laughs> hey, back to hotels for us. What's that? It's a sandwich. <laughs> it's a sandwich. Back to dirty hotels for a second. So I'm a frequent traveler and I've had a lot of interactions with health department folks. Uh -huh. uh, a couple of things to pass along. Okay. Uh, if you go to a hotel, uh, put your remote control in a Ziploc bag. Take a Ziploc bag, put it oh. in there because that's one of the dirtiest things in the room. Also, if your coffee maker is in the bathroom, do <gasps> not <laughs> use oh, it. Oh, yeah, that's true. I've seen that. Don't do it. Oh, you can try and clean it, but, I mean, it's in there where you're doing where every, other stuff. <laughs> everything else is going on. So just a couple of fun facts for your Wednesday morning. Thank you for the you're welcome. reminder. Let's check in with Steven <laughs> yeah, in a clean traffic lab. <laughs> yeah, it's clean over here. You know, disinfect the wipes and everything like that. But you know what, guys? Uh, we are keeping a watchful eye on this crash that happened out towards the hill country. This is the closest view that our friends at Transguide are able to get us uh, right at I-10 at Comfort. Now, this crash was reported a little bit past 3 this morning, uh, a little bit after 3 this morning. That is very difficult to make out exactly what is going on there. But take a look at our map. Uh, this is where that crash occurred here off I-10 eastbound at FM 289. This is a little bit past Bernie uh, and a little bit between Comfort and Bernie, that is. You can see that traffic is building there in these eastbound lanes at I-10. Again, been out there since a little bit after 3 this morning. We're hearing that this could possibly be a very serious crash. We're working to get that information confirmed with you, so stay with us here on GMSA. Looks like that traffic just went up a little bit there, but it's been well, relatively quiet here in the Alamo City, so that's a pretty good sign if you're going to be heading out to any anywhere here in the outlying areas. Uh, no big issues come in those inbound times either right now. 
now, but let's go ahead and take a look right over here off I I 35 southbound where we do have a stall at AT&T Parkway uh, doesn't create any issues for anyone heading out in that area right now just because it's still early on enough. But again, we are going to be watching this crash out here off I 10 East. Again, the view here at Comfort doesn't show much going on, but you can see that traffic is continuing to build this morning. And Stephen, I believe you told us that uh, we have a news crew on the way out there to. Yes, we do have a news crew. Sarah Costa and our her photojournalist Azian are on their way out there, so hoping to get that information confirmed shortly. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And you know, hot and humid today. Yeah, uh, we had the break yesterday, so it's now back to uh, sort of reality, if you will. Also, the full moon is technically tomorrow, but boy, a nice, big, beautiful moon out there and some of those big puffy clouds yesterday with some blue skies. Uh, as far as sunrise this morning, got a lot of clouds out there. It's going to be kind of limited, and then we'll see more sunshine mixed in with clouds later on today. Humidity, dew points are well up into the mid-70s, meaning... Yeah, you walk outside and it's like, I want to go back inside and uh, they're really not going to be dropping down all that much throughout the afternoon hours. So that's why heat index readings are going to be about 10 degrees above what the air temperature reading is. And that's going to be the same situation tomorrow. Same situation going on into Friday as well. But like I said, we will have and even though we didn't have any uh, triple digits on the map yesterday, we will have a few more today. But Heat index readings, everybody's going to be well up into the triple digits. No heat advisories are issued right now where the numbers just aren't quite up to where it warrants a heat advisory. But of course, you got to take it easy if you're outside. Lots of shade, lots of sunscreen, lots of water. Here's the uh, satellite and radar picture and got a couple of uh, showers, thunderstorms down there along the coast and around the country. There's no big systems anywhere. Notice the huge kind of trough out there to the west and then the big area of high. This is sort of a, a clockwise rotation right here, and that's the high, which is just about sitting right on top of us, and that's keeping things at bay as far as any rain chances. We will see a couple of showers down there along the coast today, uh, one or two of them just given the fact there's some out there right now. Nothing really tomorrow, Friday, nor Saturday. Sunday, we do then have a better chance for a couple of showers. And again, this tends to broad brush. It won't be raining constantly around here, but off to the kind of eastern half of our viewing area couple of showers and then rain chances will start to go up Monday and then going on into the middle part of next week. It's not going to be a constant rain, anything like that, but at least we're going to have some decent rain chances. And with the cloud cover, that's going to help to keep uh, temperatures down right around 90, maybe even just upper 80s going into next week. Kind of jealous up there. It is 54 degrees right now in Cleveland, 57 in D.C. Then on the flip side of that right now, it is still 93 in Phoenix. So our forecast, that will be about our high temperature later on today, a little bit above that, 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, and high temperature up to 95, mixture of sunshine and clouds, if you will, but it will feel like 105. And same thing again tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, different situation, more clouds around here, only 92 for a high temperature, given the extra clouds, a couple of showers, especially off to the east and along the coast, and then even a little bit better rain chances coming in here Monday and Tuesday, and they may actually stick around as it looks right now in the middle of next week. Okay. Are there any things that uh, jump out at you guys or that you're paranoid about when you travel in hotel rooms? Uh, <laughs> Well, at this point, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Well, there are people that travel around with Lysol, you know, yes. even the little travel size yes. cans of Lysol. Don't you yes. need a couple of germs to help build your own immunity? Well, yeah, and you, you know. get that in door, you know, just getting out of bed in the morning. I mean, in your day-to-day <laughs> right. -day your interaction. House. So, yeah. uh, but as far as hotel rooms, I guess. I don't know. I guess walking around on the carpeting barefoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hence the slipper yeah. tip. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Mike. Right now it is 553, about 78 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3706, Fireball 5, Daily 4, 3265, Fireball 9. The rest of your sanitary lotto numbers, Cash 5, 2510, 1819, and Mega Millions, 126, 48, 51, 59, Mega Ball 25, Mega Plier 4, good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on those concerns about the Delta variant now accounting for 20 percent of new cases in the country. Will it derail our progress in the pandemic? We're going to have the latest on that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. 
All right, coming up on GMSA, if you're looking for work, we're going to tell you all the details on a big job fair kicking off late this morning. And Transguide right now, can't see it on any of the cameras right now that we're tracking, but there is a bad accident out past Bernie in the Texas Hill Country. We have a news crew on the way, and Stephen is tracking what could be delays on inbound 10 between Bernie and Comfort. More to come right here on GMSA. Plus, Mike's forecast, the humidity is back in full force, but there are storms in his extended forecast. A closer look after the break. If you're looking for a job, the good news is that dozens of businesses in the hospitality and service industry are looking to hire. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, we'll tell you about a local job fair happening today. The bill to establish a national standard for voting rights has failed. I'm Ike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, the Democrats' plan moving forward. You'll see more of this crazy video. A herd of cows trying to make a run for it in the middle of a Southern California neighborhood. And taking a look outside with live cam, no cows here, but a very nice shot out there. We're at 78 degrees right now. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It's hump day. Good morning, everybody. Wednesday, June 23rd. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you enjoyed that nice break we had yesterday. It was warm, but not that warm. Right, and the humidity, uh, we had a little break there. Mike is back with us this week and uh, joins us now with, uh, as you said earlier, a kind of a return to reality. Yeah, you know, mid-90s, a lot of humidity, a lot of humidity this morning. That's <laughs> the thing, though. You know, it seems like we've had an extra lot of humidity, but it's the reason is good because we've had some rain and that has added to it the rain that we had uh, early yesterday morning and late uh, Monday night. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out. It's like, gee, when do I cut my grass this week? Because it's going to be in the afternoon. I'm gonna, it's going to be hot out there. So what are you doing tomorrow afternoon? Uh, mowing your grass. <laughs> You heard it, folks. Uh, anyway, yeah, lots of humidity out there this morning, and just take it easy. We do have a couple of showers down along the coast, down uh, right there by Victoria, and some of those are trying to uh, ease their way a little bit further to the west, but the majority of all this is just going to be staying well out there to the east of us, uh, so rain chances really aren't in the forecast today. One thing, though, boy, it feels like 83 out there at the airport right now. Stinson, at least it's gone down slightly. It was feeling like 87 degrees with all that humidity earlier this morning. Mold is on the moderate side and uh, throughout the day temperatures aren't going to be moving from where they are right now. Very warm, very humid, a lot of clouds this morning and then we'll see more sunshine mixed in with those clouds later on today. Make it up to 90 at noon and then we top off at 95. But again, that does not tell the whole story because add roughly 10 degrees to that and that's what it's going to be feeling like when you factor in the humidity. Same thing tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, we start to see some changes later on in the weekend going into next week, and I think you're going to like them. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso has got a couple of big problems, right, sir? Yeah, the big one right now, Mike, is going to be this crash. That it's hard to make out here off I-10 East. You know, let's go ahead and take a look right now at Transguide. This is the closest view our friends over there could get us. It doesn't look like much is going on, but I did just talk to the Bernie Police Department just a few moments ago. They did confirm that there is a crash that is still happening out there. We have They have several units that are responsible into that crash so serious enough to where it's causing a delay. Now we have been seeing this crash on Textot site so since a little bit after 3:30 this morning, but now we're seeing where it's starting to pick up here off I-10 eastbound right at FM 289 again where that crash has occurred. So if you are coming in from Bernie, this is between Bernie and Comfort, but if you're coming in to Bernie from Comfort, uh, you will be seeing this uh, crash out there and could experience this delay. So just be prepared, uh, but taking a look here around San Antonio, there's not much happening, which is a good sign. If you're heading to any destination within the Alamo City, uh, but right now we are going to be watching that crash there and we do have a crew that is heading out there to the scene working to get us more information and a look at the ground there. Uh, but right now things are still looking fairly good coming in from I-10 from Bernie 24 minutes right now to downtown San Antonio. If you are coming in from Bulverde on 281, we got 25 minutes and from 35, we have 25 minutes uh, to downtown San Antonio. But again, this is going to be the crash that we'll be watching throughout the morning, seeing how it may impact morning commuters drive time to the San Antonio area. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. If you're looking for work, you are in luck. Later today, Visit SA is hosting a big job fair over at the Alamo Dome. The event is aimed at helping the hospitality industry right here in the Alamo City. Sarah Costa has more. 
If you're looking for a job, you're in luck today because at today's job fair, hotels, restaurants and entertainment venues are all looking to fill about 100 jobs. There is going to be more than 25 businesses at the Alamo Dome today to interview applicants for entry level, part time, temporary and full time positions. Right now, San Antonio is seeing a surge of visitors and there is not enough help to keep up with demand. We're missing almost a third of our workforce, a third of our workforce. And so we're looking to uh, to find those individuals and bring them back in. Today's job fair is happening from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Alamo Dome. It's a free event and those attending the job fair can park in parking lot A. For more information, just head to our website, ksat.com. From downtown, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Sarah. San Antonio police asked for help finding suspects in multiple burglaries at Market Square over the past few days. Police believe those pictured here on your screen burglarized and in some cases damaged several vendor tents at Market Square during Fiesta. One vendor reported their booth was hit twice in two days. Items stolen included wallets, purses, hunting knives and utensils. If you recognize them or have any information, you're asked to call Central Property Crimes and that number's on your screen. It is 210 207-7990. We have an update to those shootings across the southern border in Reynosa that left 19 people dead over the weekend. Officials there are now saying it was infighting between rival factions of the Gulf drug cartel, which led to the deadly violence. Trucks carrying gunmen drove into Reynosa, where the suspects then opened fire. 14 out of the 19 killed were innocent bystanders. Four of the gunmen were among those killed. 606 right now, the U.S. Senate has voted to strike down the Democrats' sweeping election reform bill. This morning, key Democrats say they plan to keep trying to find ways to change things anyway. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with the latest. The clerk will call the roll. Overnight, Small. Vice President Kamala Harris presiding over the sweeping voting rights bill. The legislation would make Election Day a federal holiday, require 15 days of early voting, and limit partisan gerrymandering. All 50 Democrats supporting the bill, including West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, who met with President Biden privately before the vote. We had a nice conversation. <laughs> Did he President's, President's message are very, very confidential. Manchin siding with Democrats after offering a narrower scope to the bill, which would put in place automatic voter registration and reform campaign finance laws, among other measures. Democrats pushing the bill forward, arguing it's needed to maintain democracy after a wave of new restrictive voting laws were passed in 15 Republican-led states. The moment met by a wave of Republican opposition. It is a solution in search of a problem. All 50 GOP senators voting against the bill, ending its chance of moving forward in the chamber. The American people don't want to see the things imposed on our election system that are in this bill. Moving forward, Democrats declaring the fight will continue. This voter suppression cannot stand, and we are going to work tirelessly to see that it does not stand. President Joe Biden releasing a statement following the vote, saying the fight is far from over, going on to say, I've been engaged in this work my whole career, and we're going to be ramping up our efforts to overcome again. A sentiment echoed American. by the vice president. This is about the American people's right to vote, unfettered. The fight now moves to the filibuster. Although Senators Manchin and Sinema are against ending it, there are fresh talks about either changing or setting aside the filibuster specifically for this effort. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. 608, about 78 degrees. The NBA draft lottery is in the books. We're going to tell you how the Spurs came out after the break. Outside with live cam on your super early Wednesday morning. Thanks for starting your day with us. It is so soupy out there as far as humidity right now. You can't even see the skyline as the sun is trying to come up. We'll be back. Introducing your 2021 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hello, my name is Natalie Torres Day, and I'm this year's Miss San Antonio. Viva Fiesta! Meet the current reigning Miss San Antonio. Natalie is a recent graduate from UTSA and holds a degree in finance. Coming from a family of hardworking immigrants and being the first one in my family to attend college has really made me value my education and really shaped for who I am and seen how much it has impacted my life for the better. And as Miss San Antonio, she's using the platform to encourage and uplift 
left at-risk students. Through my platform, I really want to focus on supporting our students who are considered to be academically at risk. And by that, I mean students who have a higher probability of failing or dropping out of school. One thing she loves about Fiesta. The Fiesta royalty came to my school, and so being a child and seeing them come with their crown and sash, it almost made it feel like there was something unique and fairy tale like about the city. When she's away from her pageant duties, Natalie enjoys classical theater and playing the piano, but going the extra mile for family and close friends is important to her. I like to plan events for them, such as like to celebrate their birthdays, uh, graduations, marriages, life-changing events, like anything to make them feel special. <laughs>our San Antonio Spurs will select 12th in the 2021 NBA draft atop the results of last night's NBA draft lottery. Not bad when you consider they selected 11th last season and were able to snag Devin Vassell, who played a total of 62 games this season as a rookie. This will be the fourth season the Spurs will pick in the top 20. As far as the uh, number one overall pick, that goes to Detroit. Congratulations, Mike Osterhage. Your Pistons are expected to select Cade Cunningham out of Oklahoma State for their top pick when the NBA holds a draft July 22nd. Meanwhile, the NBA Western Conference Finals underway. We had a dramatic finish to last night's game between the Clips and Suns. Suns going to the game... Uh, uh, Two with a 1-0 series lead, and just like game one, both teams missing an all-star. Kawhi for L.A., Chris Paul for Phoenix. In the end, the game had decided by the one point in the final moments, point nine left. Suns drop a perfect lob pass to DeAndre Ayton, who dunks it for the win at the very end of the game. Final from the desert, Suns win 104-103. Phoenix now just two wins away from a trip to the NBA Finals. Heck of a game. Stephanie's Texas Longhorns faced elimination game yesterday against the Tennessee Volunteers in the College World Series up in Omaha. Horns down too early, but Eric Kennedy winds up driving in two runners, edging ahead by one. Vols would then tie the game at the top of the fourth, but the Horns would charge forward in the bottom of the inning. 6-4 Texas, but they're not finished. Cam Williams with an RBI single to Lep puts it over the top. Texas lives to fight another day to final score, 8 to four. Rough night for the missions up in Frisco. Rough Riders wasted no time getting runs on the board. San Antonio couldn't keep up and lost the series opener to Frisco last night. Final score 7-2. They have now lost six of the seven games they have played against the Rough Riders this season. Our missions are back in action tonight up in Frisco at 7.05. Well, good luck to the missions and yay, Longhorns. I know you're happy about that. Very happy about it. Let's check traffic right now. And one of the big incidents that Stephen's tracking is way up in the Texas Hill Country. Yep, that's right, Mark. We are tracking a lot this morning here on GMSA. This is a view from the Trans Guide at 35 at FM 1103. Looks like business as usual for our friends that are coming into the downtown San Antonio area from New Braunfels. Nothing too out of the ordinary here, but as Mark just mentioned, we want to bring your attention to the Texas Hill Country right over here off I-10 eastbound at FM 289. This is actually between Comfort and Bernie. We had a crash that TxDOT reported that happened around maybe 3.30 this morning, and it's still been there and now causing quite uh, the slow down there on those eastbound lanes of I-10. I did speak to the Bernie Police Department a little bit earlier this morning. They did tell me that there is a crash out there, that they have numerous units that have responded. So we'll be watching that closely, and we do have a crew heading out to the scene to get us a ground shot and a look at what's going on out there. But uh, taking a look over here, we still have a stall that's actually happened over here off I-35 southbound right at Salado Creek, not causing any major issues right now for our drivers in that area. So it's been a relatively quiet morning here in the Alamo City. City. Nothing too major to report, but again, we are going to be watching that crash over up on I-10 East. Again, we do have a crew that's heading out to the scene. If you're coming into the San Antonio area from Bernie, that could impact your commute time, but so far things are looking pretty quiet. Very good. And let's check in with Mike and nice tie, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank Very you. Festive. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of kind of fiesta-ish. Yeah. yeah, it is. 
one of those that was sort of in the you know back of the, the closet right there. In, in the Fiesta oh, section. In the Fiesta section, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> right next to the Christmas tie that I pull out in Christmas time. Not yet. Don't worry about that. Anyway, uh, temperatures right now, we're at 79 degrees, so we're uh, five above normal. Everybody is way above where it you would expect it to be, the normally average temperature. And very warm, very humid this morning, and then partly cloudy. Heat index is going to be about 105 and higher than that later on this afternoon, and that'll be the situation the rest of the week. It's going to be on the hot side, but then as we go into the end of the weekend and next week, low 90s and a couple of showers around here. Actually, rain chances are looking right now looking pretty good for next week. Love this picture. Nice little butterfly out there. Just nice, kind of peaceful to look at. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, not a pretty uh, shot there. Lots of clouds and look at all that that haze hanging around here with all the humidity, which dew point temperatures did go up. Now, in some places, they actually dropped down around Carrizo Springs compared to this time yesterday morning, but went up uh, just a couple of degrees, five Gonzalez, five in Hondo, and it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but when you're talking about two, three degrees with dew points, that does make a whole lot of difference. And with that humidity hanging around, then we will see heat index readings again about 105 low hundreds uh, up to close to 110. No heat advisories because it's not quite up to where it should be to issue a heat advisory. But of course, you just got to take it easy, obviously, and we're not really going to see any big break in the humidity. However, that really doesn't tell the whole story because we are going to have temperatures dropping down a little bit going into next week, as well as those rain chances, but really nothing for the next couple of days. We've got a few showers along the coast today, and there may be one or two of them uh, around this morning and Saturday, not much out there. But then Sunday, we do start to see a little bit better chance for some rain. And that doesn't mean it's going to rain constantly nor everywhere. Again, this is, tends to broad brush things, but rain chances will start to go up as we go into Monday, as well as going into the middle part of next week. So the high, which is sitting almost and, and basically on top of us, that keeps things status quo for the next couple of days. That's not really going to be moving. Then it's going to start to edge out of the way and and sort of an unusual big trough that's going to be cutting through the middle part of the country. This is going to help to keep temperatures down somewhat, and we have some little disturbances sliding in here. And that's going to give us rain chances really starting Monday into the middle of next week, and then a little uh, bit of uh, maybe a low trying to develop out there in the Gulf of Mexico by the middle of next week, which will help out with rain chances going into next week. So details today, 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature, about two degrees above normal, so not that much. However, factor in the humidity, 105 is what it will feel like later on today with sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. Same thing in tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we start to change a little lower temperatures, a little better chance of rain, and then temperatures go down, rain chances go up going into the middle of next week. I that, like that. That's encouraging. I like the Very. low 90s or actually 90 instead of 90 something. Right. No. Humidity is still going to be around, but it will get squeezed out. And uh, again, now right now it looks like good chance of rain by the middle of the week. And it should be noted, Mike is <coughs> planning to mow before it rains again <laughs> yeah. or it's going to be a problem. You have some time. Yes. <laughs> okay. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 620 right now, <laughs> about 78 degrees. And have you seen this video? Police in Southern California had their hands full overnight trying to herd a group of cows on the run. This and more at the break. It's very common to have both sensitivity and gum issues. Dentists and hygienists will want to recommend Sensodyne sensitivity and gum. Do you get the sensitivity relief as well as improved gum health? All in one. Eric. Try our new scented oils for freshness that lasts. Crafted to give you amazingly natural smelling fragrances day after day for up to 60 days. Give us one plug for freshness that lasts. It's all oh so quiet. Oh, so still shh, shh, and so peaceful. In this morning's GMA down, first look, down, down. a new way of training police officers. Down, Code 33 shots fired. Oakland law enforcement using a new simulator to train in de-escalation tactics. Over that way, over that way. 
This simulator offers multiple scenarios to train officers to use the appropriate use of force. In this scenario, Officer Mia Cooper is confronted with a sex trafficker and a prostitute. I need you to step away from her. In one outcome, he bolts. But run it again, this time it's different. The simulator is increasingly being used in police departments across the nation, especially to help diffuse confrontations. How can both people leave that interaction safely? How can we both live through this experience and make sure that nobody gets hurt? I think that's our objective. And coming up at 7 a.m., a behind-the-scenes look at the training. With your GMA first look, I'm Matt Gutman, ABC News, Oakland. I need you to control your... Facebook announcing four new shopping features, among them is Shops on WhatsApp, which allows users to chat with businesses before buying something. Another will let sellers set up an online store right on Facebook with on-site checkout. You can now add videos to your Tinder dating profile. Up to nine videos can be uploaded as the company gives users a more, quote, authentic way to express themselves. Also, a new speed dating feature allows short chats with other users before swiping left or right. Man, holy cow, a herd of California, uh, rather cows got loose and ran through a Southern California neighborhood Tuesday night. They believe that uh, they got loose from a slaughterhouse in the area. At least 20 cows were seen running down the roadways, then cutting through yards and trampling bushes. Los Angeles County deputies came to help round up the wandering herd. You see one of the news choppers there overhead. Authorities said by late Tuesday night, most of the cows had been corralled into trailers in a neighborhood cul-de-sac. Oh my goodness. But look how many police units they have out there trying to, and they're not going to get all of them right there. At least No. In, I mean, how, how do you do that if you're not? It, without scaring them. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. not real sure. That's a challenge. Mm-hmm. Yep. But well, those all, look like, they, the, in the front, they look like they're just chilling out there walking the neighborhood streets. They're, they're, he, they're headed to a Chick-fil-A billboard nearby. <laughs> I'm so sure. Eat more chicken. <laughs> yes. 626, about 78 degrees on your Wednesday morning. And still ahead on GMSA, the latest on the highly contagious coronavirus Delta variant now counting for 20% of new COVID cases in the U.S. and doubling every two weeks. If you're just now waking up or tuning in, uh, Stephen is tracking traffic. There's 35 at FM 1103. I have a couple of vehicles off to the side of the road. We'll try to find out what's going on there. And then the big incident is I-10 inbound out past Bernie this morning in the Texas Hill Country. And we have a crew on the way there. We'll try to get you updated coming up. Has your child been coming down with any illness? Turns out you're not alone. What local doctors are saying about a rise in childhood sickness this time of year. Early yesterday, we had storms and a cold front, a break from the humidity, but we're back to normal as of today. Mike is uh, back in house and our details coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, June 23rd. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed that slight break yesterday. I did. I, I actually went out for a run and yes, it was hot, but it wasn't that hot. Where do we go from here today? And as we get into the latter half of the work week, Mike is back with us this morning. Good to see you back in house this yep, morning. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, temperatures were down to 90 yesterday. That's it for a high with the cloud cover, a little bit of front that moved through. Still had some humidity, but today we still keep the humidity and then it's back up. And also, uh, Justin Horn just uh, wa walked in the station and said that ran into one little spot of rain over there on the uh, north side. Nothing showing up in this picture right now. Temperatures right now are at 79. 75 is the dew point. It means a ton of humidity out there. You will definitely feel it. So this morning I've been kind of concentrating down here to the southeast and seeing some of this clutter, but uh, you really got to focus in and squint hard and there's those couple little showers. So right there, uh, maybe about 281, a few of these little sprinkly showers that have shown up and looks like they're heading over toward 1604. So just to kind of watch out, said he had to use wipers lasted for about two seconds and that was it, but it's going to make the roads kind of damp in places. And again, down here to the southeast, we do have some of these uh, showers and uh, thunderstorms, although they have been dying down a little bit. These will primarily stay there along the uh, the coastal plain. One or two may try and squeak in. But again, don't be surprised if you see a brief, very brief little shower, even um, some sprinkles out there. Temperatures it feels like 84 at Stinson, 83 Castroville, Port SA, the airport Canyon Lake. Thanks to all that humidity. 
and mold is on the moderate side throughout the rest of today. Well, we got warm, humid rain along the coast and again, maybe a couple of sprinkles even uh, in around town on the north side of town. Heat index 105 and higher than that. No heat advisories are in effect, but of course, lots of water, lots of shade, lots of sunscreen staying hot the rest of the week. Not much really changes. Then we go into the latter part of the weekend. Not quite as hot. We'll have more cloud cover and rain chances will start to go up as we approach the middle part of next week to finish off the month of June. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, got a couple of big ones out there, right? Yeah, it's been a busy morning, Mike. You know, we're taking a look here at the view from Transgot at 35 at FM 1103. Doesn't look too bad, maybe a little cloudy, but, uh, you know, things are picking up here. And we do have things that look pretty normal, but we've spotted a few crashes that are just near the area right out towards uh, I-35 northbound at Watson Lane. This is just on the outskirts of New Braunfels. This is not causing any real issues right now for our early morning commuters, thankfully, but we are watching the big crash right over here. That's just on the other side over at I-10 eastbound at FM 289. Now this crash has been there on TxDOT's website since 330 this morning, so it's been there for a few hours now and traffic is just continuing to build over here, slowing down. Uh, we are watching that very closely and we do have a crew heading out to the scene right now uh, just to give you a little bit more specifics. This is between Bernie and Comfort. So if you are coming into the San Antonio area or even just coming into Bernie, uh, this could impact your commute right now as the morning does get going here. Uh, we've also spotted a stall right over here off San Antonio off uh, I-10 eastbound at Colorado Street, not causing any real issues right now. Still early enough to where people, not as many people are out on the roads, but of course, as we know, more people get out on the roads. We start to see a little bit more of those backups and slowdowns, and we want everyone to be cautious and safe. But over Overall, it has been a quiet morning here in the San Antonio area. Just that crash that we're continuing to watch out towards between Bernie and Comfort. Uh, but right now, things are still looking good in that direction in the inbound times. 24 minutes coming in from I-10. If you are coming in from Mulverde, we got 27 minutes. And coming in from New Braunfels, 27 minutes on 35. Bringing it back here to Transguy, things are picking up. Thank you, Stephen. Now to a health alert parents need to know about. Local pediatricians say they've seen a lot of busy, uh, sick kids coming back uh, in now that things have been getting back into normal. Pediatrician Robert Sanders here in San Antonio says it was like a faucet turning on with the influx of sick kids going in to see him starting around March. Many of those upper respiratory illnesses like croup, RSV, and the common cold are often associated with the fall and winter seasons. A doctor says it's important that kids be reminded to wash their hands, use good hygiene, and wear a mask if they can. A rise in more serious viruses has prompted a notice by the CDC to ask more doctors to test for RSV. Respiratory syncytial virus, uh, it's a virus that causes bronchiolitis. That's um, that's an infection that actually can be pretty severe and little uh, in our younger patients. Another common illness in the summertime includes hand, foot and mouth disease. Doctors think the illnesses will start to slow down in mid July, but then make a big return when school starts again. If you're looking for work, you're in luck later today. Visit SA is hosting a big job fair over at the Alamo Dome. That event aimed at helping the hospitality industry right here in the Alamo City. Hotels, restaurants and entertainment venues looking to fill hundreds of job openings. Right now, San Antonio is seeing a surge of visitors and there are not enough uh, is not enough help to help keep up the demand. Members from more than 25 businesses will be at the Dome to interview applicants for entry level, part time, temporary and full time positions. Best part about the job fair interviews will be and offers will be made right there on the spot. People are going to interview right then and there and, and job offers are going to be extended right then and there. So it's not going to be like you have to wait a week to find out whether you got a job or not. No, no, we're going to make offers at that point at the Alamo Dome. We're missing almost a third of our workforce, a third of our workforce. And so we're looking to uh, to find those individuals and bring them back in. That job fair is happening today from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Alamo Dome. It's a free event and applicants can park in lot A. For more information, you can go to our website at ksat.com. Democrats' sweeping attempt to rewrite U.S. election and voting laws suffered a major setback in the Senate last night after being blocked by a filibuster wall of Republican opposition. The bill, known as a For the People Act, would touch on virtually every aspect of how elections are conducted, striking down hurdles to voting that advocates of the bill view as the civil rights fight of the era. Critics of the legislation say the measure represents a federal infringement on states' authority to conduct their own elections without fraud. 
A little over a year after losing their loved ones in a tragic helicopter crash, Kobe Bryant's widow Vanessa and other families have settled a wrongful death lawsuit against the company that owned and operated the helicopter. Terms of the settlement still have to be approved by a court. In January 2020, basketball legend Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others died in that helicopter crash in California. Earlier this year, the NTSB said the pilot pushed the limits of the weather when he decided to fly that day. Turning to the pandemic, officials say infections from the Delta variant of the coronavirus are now doubling every two weeks. And this morning we're hearing from a nurse in Missouri sounding the alarm for young adults. ABC's Andrew Dembert has details. This morning, the highly contagious Delta variant spreading fast within America's borders, now accounting for 20% of new COVID cases in the U.S. and doubling every two weeks. The Delta variant is currently the greatest threat in the U.S., to our attempt to eliminate COVID-19. The variant now confirmed in nearly every state and now accounting for nearly half of all infections from Iowa to Colorado. Officials warn younger people could be more vulnerable because only 38% of people between the ages of 18 and 29 are at least partially vaccinated. A nurse in Springfield, Missouri says her hospital beds are filling up with younger unvaccinated patients who are getting sicker quicker. What we're seeing now are the patients um, who are coming in who don't think that they're going to get sick from it, who aren't mentally prepared um, to make life and death decisions of do they want to be intubated? Do you want CPR if your heart should stop? The Biden administration now concedes it will not meet its goal of getting 70 percent of American adults at least partially vaccinated by July 4th, saying it will likely take several more weeks. In Florida, Pastor Marcel Davis is going door to door urging people to get the shot. I want to encourage young people to realize, yes, wake up, be woke and know the consequences. I've gone to at least, you know, two dozen funerals of people who've had COVID, but I often say I've not been to any funerals of someone who died from the vaccine. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Back here in San Antonio this evening, you have another chance to head out to Night Old San Antonio. Hundreds of people came out last night for opening night. Many were grateful to be back since it was canceled last year. Niosa continues through Friday. And keep in mind, because this is such a popular and crowded event, you're asked to wear a mask if you're not fully vaccinated. Money raised goes to the Conservation Society of San Antonio, which is one of the nation's oldest and most active historic preservation organizations. We do have ticket information on our website at ksat.com. Do you see the lines? Yes. Wow. Have fun. Be safe. Yes, that's great, though. Time now is 639 and about 78 degrees out there. There's a whole war full of memories behind this mural. Good morning. I'm Katrina Weber. And if these walls could talk, they tell you the story that I have coming up. And welcome back. It's about 643. Memories of a battle from a time gone by are on a full display in a West Side neighborhood. A mural painted more than a decade ago at West Commerce in Colorado acts as a constant reminder that Vietnam veterans are not forgotten. Trina Weber tells us the story of the muse behind the mural in this week's edition of If These Walls Could Talk. They're patriots, you know, they, they love their country. They had a calling and they served it. It's a sentiment not wasted on Mike Roman. It was rough. Even though most of the Vietnam War happened before he was born, it took center stage in his life, in his family's home. We really didn't get my dad back from Vietnam until 30 years later because he was self-medicating and all that to deal with all the, the post-traumatic stress. He saw and, uh, firsthand so the inner conflicts the war had caused yeah. and how his father ultimately worked through them. In 2006, a group called San Anto Cultural Arts asked Mike to tell that story in a mural. This is me, a hundred pounds ago. <laughs> Tony and Roman's experience is what mom. many people live through and how many others die. His son asked countless questions and listened to other vets' stories in order to capture it all. Nothing political or anything like that, right? So this is all about the camaraderie that, that, uh, that these men formed. With cooperation from another San Antonio family, there was space for all his ideas. The wall itself donated. And my brother being a Vietnam veteran, uh, it was an automatic yes. While this may look like just another Vietnam mural, Mike Ramon says he purposely painted secret messages in here that only veterans would understand. You see the planes with the uh, 
with the uh, fumes coming out, uh -huh. that's actually Agent Orange. Never in my wildest dreams, 50 some odd years ago, would I think that I would be at the site that my son would do. Now it has become a mecca for other vets. Every year, Jaime Macias holds a luncheon for them here. All the countless veterans that have uh, 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 come to celebrate with us, it is, it is uh, beyond words. The pictures, though, speak volumes. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Good morning, everyone. If you've been with us here on GMSA, we've been tracking a major crash here off I-10. This is a view from TransGuy that our friends could get us here. Uh, it shows here that it looks like a pretty smooth morning, but what we want to do is take you to a shot that uh, we have set up right over there where this crash is actually taking place a little bit further down on I-10 eastbound. Let's go ahead and see if we can bring up that shot now. Uh, as you can see, it looks like we do have several first responders that are still out there on the scene in the Texas Hill Country. Uh, what we're looking at, it looks like a truck that was uh, had some damage to the front end of it. Now it's not clear what caused this crash, but TxDOT has reported it has been out there for several hours since a little bit after 330 this morning. Again, this is a live picture at the scene right now. While it does appear that some lanes are impacted, traffic is moving, but it is moving quite slowly. Again, this is between Bernie and Comfort. So if you are coming into the downtown San Antonio area in the next few moments, this could impact your commute or even perhaps heading into Bernie from Comfort. Let's go ahead and bring it back here to the maps if we can and show you again how traffic is looking like on the wall right now. Uh, traffic slowing down right now again here off I-10 eastbound. Again, take a look at right here. FM 289 is where that crash happened out between Bernie and Comfort. We are working to get you information, but the Bernie Police Department is out there responding. They have several crews. It's been a pretty busy morning for them. Thank you, Stephen, and beautiful moon there behind you. Yeah, the moon is going to be full tomorrow, but uh, obviously right as the sun is going down tonight, look off to the east and you will see the moon coming up. If we uh, don't have a whole lot of clouds out there, we should have sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds, but what a great view. Thank you. What a great picture. All right, uh, sunrise, no. Uh, and you can see all that haze there off in the distance right there along the horizon. Humidity is just th thick as can be. Been watching all these showers down here along the coastal plain this morning, and most of this is uh, just some ground clutter. But as I was talking about earlier, Justin Horn came in and uh, said he ran into one brief little shower. And as you can see, these things just kind of popped up and then sort of fizzled on out. So if there are a couple of damp spots on the road there on 281, maybe 1604 and uh, 410 by the airport. So just kind of watch out for that this morning. And then those few showers down there along the coast have been sort of dying down. There's a lot more out there in the Gulf of Mexico, but anything uh, rain as far as off to the east is pretty much going to be staying off to the east. Heat index readings today well up into the hundreds in well all of the area. No heat advisories are formally in effect, but of course just lots of water, lots of shade and the uh, radar picture right now. There's not a heck of a lot going on in our vicinity except down there along the coast nor really around the country and there's, there's a big clockwise rotation here that's the the high which is in control of our weather and that's why nothing's really going to be changing over the next couple of days there will be maybe one or two showers off to the east later on today tomorrow not much not much friday nor saturday then we go into sunday a little disturbance is going to try and work its way in here and we'll have a chance for some rain, not constantly, but a few showers, especially off to the east on Sunday and better rain chances look like they're going to be coming in here Monday. And then as we go into the middle part of the week as that high, which is going to stay plunked down right on top of us over the next couple of days and you got sinking air, you got nothing as far as any rain chances, really that will start to move off to the west a little bit more and that's going to open up the door for the couple of showers and also kind of an unusual big trough is going to be moving uh, into the central portion of the country and that'll have sort of an indirect effect on our weather. So today 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today makes it up to 95, but add roughly 10 to that. That's what it's going to feel like with all the humidity out there. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. That's when uh, a couple of showers here and there, a little bit better chance of rain going into the middle part of next week. And as it's looking right now, we may have some rain chances even extending in toward the, uh, the 1st of July on uh, Thursday. So. What are you and the one o'clock folks doing on SA Live? We are going to be, uh, there's a restaurant that, of course, everybody has great Fiesta food out there. And uh, this restaurant, we're going to be talking about how it's all the Fiesta influence food and drink. And down there at Market Square and 
got our sashes on and passing out what medals we have left over. So it's so fun to see everybody all set up and all the booths set up. Yeah. I'm here. So. Everybody's in such great mood, very festive. Good to, you know, you could see people it, are just jubilant to be back together. Yeah. It, you know, it all started last Thursday at Fiesta Fiesta mm -hmm. and folks mm -hmm. just loved being out there and over the weekend and down at the parade Monday night. So yeah, it is Good fun. Good turnout. So. Yeah. yeah. Come down, come down, say hi. Right. All right. Well, so the, enjoy, enjoy the Fiesta food. That's yeah. right. The nitty gritty on Niosa today on SA Live at one o'clock. Thanks, yep. Mike. All right, time now 650 and about 78 degrees out there right now. Tomorrow on GMSA, our Tejano Moments series continues, and we're taking a look at some of the heroes who fought and died for Texas freedom. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. A little humid out there at 78 degrees. Uh, it's going to heat up this afternoon. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on those concerns about the Delta variant now accounting for 20 percent of new cases in the country. Will it derail our progress in the pandemic? We're going to have the latest on that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. It's 6.54. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos, a big mess in the Hill Country. That's right, Mark and Steph. It's been a pretty big mess out there. Now, the view from Transguy doesn't show much going on right now. This is I-10 at Comfort. You can see it looks like the smooth commute right now, but the big deal is going to be this crash that happened a little bit further up on I-10 eastbound at FM 289. Now, while it doesn't show much going on right here, I think we're having a little bit of a glitch at this moment, but there was a major crash that was reported overnight around 3.30 this morning, and it has led to some big delays for drivers that are heading in that direction. As we just showed you a little earlier, uh, there was a few lanes that were blocked off, so traffic could continue to move smoothly there, but uh, a little bit of a slowdown more than what we would like to see at that hour as you're coming in from the comfort area to Bernie. But we're going to be watching that closely and getting more information for you throughout the day. Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And it's very, very humid when you step out there this morning. There's our morning clouds and we'll see some, uh, you know, sunshine mixed in with the clouds later on today. Heat index right now, 81, 83 Port SA and 87 is what it feels like at Stinson. And we'll make it up to 90 at noon, 95 high temperature. But again, factor in the humidity and it will feel like about 105 wind out of the southeast. It's going to start to pick up a little bit more later on this evening. And in the next couple of days, Pretty much same thing. Lots of clouds in the morning, some sunshine in the afternoon. We'll start to see some changes by Sunday. A couple of showers off to the east, especially, and then slightly better change, rain chances move in here Monday, Tuesday, and some temperatures that are going to be on the below normal side. Nice right. way to finish up the month of June. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. a friendly reminder, don't forget outdoor pet shelter and fresh water that is out of the direct sun, yep. if possible, especially in the afternoons. Definitely, yeah, protect the pets, protect the humans, and happy Wednesday <laughs> and happy Fiesta, guys. We'll see you back here at 9.